Hello and welcome to Carly Talks Music. This is a weekly video blog where I just chat about something musical for the week. Not so. This episode is part three of my Mozart Mania trilogy that I decided to put together for this blog. I'm going to be giving you a couple random facts, well more than a couple of random facts about Mozart as well as what drove his genius while he was in adulthood. As to where I'm getting my facts, all of my uh, sources that I use in my paper are in the info box below. If you don't know what paper I'm talking about, then you probably haven't watched the first two parts of this little trilogy. I suggest that you go check it out if you get the chance, or if you just want to know about random crap about Mozart, then you can just stick on and listen. As for some of the random facts that I'm pulling, random, that don't really follow my research. I'm getting them from my college music history book. So here's what it looks like. Legit, yep, highlighted stuff and everything for ya. So that's what I'll be reading some of the random facts from. It's pretty common knowledge that Mozart was a child prodigy. He also, his father Leopold was a composer as well and wrote one of the most notable violin like method book type of things uh, back in his time so he was already already had you know music in his blood but yeah uh, Mozart's father Leopold actually made him and his sister him Mozart and his sister Anna tour around the country when they were kids so basically pushing them into the spotlight when they're you know like four to eight, about. My music history book talks about a man that got to see Mozart live when he was eight, and he said that he brought in a manuscript for him to read because that's part of what, like, the Mozart show was, was that people would bring in music and Lil Mozart would sight read it just on the spot. And so this guy brought in a manuscript that wasn't very well known, and the parts are written in different clefs than are normal for piano music, keyboard music. And yeah, he said the score was no sooner put upon his desk than he began to play the symphony in a most masterly manner as well as in the time and style which corresponded with the intention of the composer. I mention this circumstance because the greatest masters often fail in these particulars on the first trial. Yeah, so he just, he was eight. He was eight, and he sight-read this little symphony and a bunch of different clefts and prodigy, genius, textbook definition, you know? Anyway, so because he was, you know, put onto this world stage at such a young age, he had what may be better known today as child star problems, you know, or hashtag child star problems. Um, Basically, because he put on these shows as a kid, he grew up always wanting to please everybody. And as we all know, you can't really please everybody. You know, you do what you can, but you can't please everybody. And so because of the fact that he was trying to make everybody happy, it put a lot of stress on him, obviously. And if he was wanting to do that from a very young age, I don't know, eventually I guess he realized he can't do everything for everybody. So during my research, I came across some notes from a doctor later on, like way after Mozart had passed away, that I guess looked back at letters and things and decided that Mozart was mentally ill. And in my paper, I argued that that's just a very contemporary way of looking at just what someone is very gifted by, uh, because the way that the author, the author, the doctor described it, he said that he maybe thought that Mozart had a cyclothymic disorder with upswings and downturns in mood, but without psychotic tendencies. And to me that just sounds like you have good days and bad days, and you work better on some days than you do on other days, and like everyone has an off day. I don't know, so that just didn't seem enough for me to think that Mozart was actually ill. I mean, maybe he was, but during my research, that's not what I came across. I think it was just that he was exposed to fame and always making everybody happy because he could do such great things at a young age that 
you know, it followed him into adulthood. So now I'm just going to give you some rapid fire facts about Mozart, things you didn't really care to know, but now if you keep listening, you will know, just for funsies. Many of Mozart's manuscripts, in comparison to other composers, had very little markings in terms of corrections. He basically composed in his head and just like wrote it down. And he, there were accounts where he actually wrote letters to his father saying basically that that he had he has everything composed, he just has yet to write it down. And so when he would write his manuscripts, they would be almost literally flawless. So even though Mozart was one of the smartest people ever, and one of the most genius people ever, he still had to supplement his income because he never really got comfortable in a court position or anything like that. So he taught piano lessons, he gave concerts, he wrote works on commission, and he actually sold the rights of some of his works to publishers to make money. And even though he s ended up settling into a court position towards the end of his life, it was more of a part-time gig that didn't even really give him enough money to support his family. So, I don't know, that's just a big thing to think about. You know, they say the reason that he wasn't more famous in his time was people literally thought that his music was too complicated and that there were too many notes. That just seems ridiculous now because we have such complicated music and you know, crazy pieces, whether it's in, you know, classical music or popular music, electronic, whatever. Thinking about someone saying, oh, there are too many notes. It's just ridiculous because, you know, if you know, violin players like to noodle around and stuff on their instrument because they're really good at that shit. And I've never heard a violin player ever complain about there being too many notes. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> He began composing before he was five. Started touring the country when he was six. Many of his letters to his family and friends include a lot of bathroom humor. And he was kind of obsessed with bodily functions. He said to have composed the overture to Don Giovanni the night before the opening. So he actually abandoned, he wrote way more than actually people got to hear. One recent scholar estimated that for every work he completed, he abandoned two. And this is the dude that wrote 50 symphonies. Like, what? Okay, whatever. Moving on. We basically have Mozart to thank for getting the clarinet a better role in the symphony. So, go Mozart, go clarinet. He was quicker to integrate it into the symphony than Haydn was. He wrote 27 string quartets, 19 sonatas for solo piano, 36 for violin and piano. He wrote 23 piano concertos. 23. Jeez Louise. Sometimes I forget just like, they just cranked out music, whereas nowadays it's like someone goes into the studio for however long until they get it exactly right and then they put it out. You know, I mean we wait so long for albums to come out, and back then composers just cranked it out. Cranked it out. <laughs> Thus ends my Mozart trilogy. I'm kind of sad. I love talking about Mozart. If you guys have any questions that I didn't answer about him in my trilogy that you would like to know, message me or comment on this or do whatever. If you want to watch the first two parts and you want to go back and watch them, here's a link to part one, and a link to part two. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Mozart, I want Mozart, Mozart, where's Dr. Mozart? This is Beethoven, so I need to go back.